Hi everyone, it's Jen from Sunday Baubles. I hope that you're doing great. This is our long-awaited Moonstone jewelry video. Today we're going to talk about what Moonstones are, what they aren't, look at some beautiful pieces of vintage and antique Moonstone jewelry, we'll talk about Moonstone pretenders, and we'll also talk about how to care for Moonstones. Let's begin with some Moonstone lore. The Romans believed that moonstones were charged by the power of the moon, and their optical properties reflected the moon's phases. In the medieval times, it was believed that travelers should carry moonstones and they would protect them, especially at night. If two people carrying moonstones happened to encounter each other even during the day, it was said that they would fall in love, and by putting a moonstone under your tongue during a full moon, you would be able to divine the future of your relationship. Let's take a look now at some of the more scientific properties associated with moonstones. Moonstone is an orthoclase feldspar, typically with alternating layers of albite. Moonstone body color can vary from transparent, white, peach, green, brown, and gray. Some moonstones have properties that are considered to be optical phenomena. Let's learn more about these. Moonstones can display the cat's eye effect as well as asterism. This is determined by the crystal structure of the stone. These earrings are great examples of the cat's eye effect on display. Agilorescence is the optical phenomena of light floating beneath the surface, generally blue or clear in a moonstone. Moonstone inclusions are called centipedes because the structure resembles the creatures with many legs. Here is a great example that displays strong agilorescence and visible centipedes. Rainbow moonstones and moonstones are often labeled interchangeably. There's something very important to take note of here. Rainbow moonstone is not a moonstone at all. It is actually a colorless labradorite. You can recognize these because of the varying colors, and sometimes these stones include black tourmaline inclusions as well. Moonstone jewelry has always had a special place in my heart. Let's begin by looking at some examples of Victorian moonstone jewelry. On your screen, you can see two typical examples of Victorian jewelry, rings set with moonstone balls and faces beautifully carved in moonstone. These carved faces are commonly reproduced today in rainbow moonstone or colorless labradorite. Let's take a closer look at a Victorian brooch from my collection. Rows and rows of golden prongs hold these moonstones securely in place. You will note that the jeweler chose to set the stones so that no matter how the light hits the brooch, some of the agilorescence is observable. Cutting and setting moonstones is an art. Here is a still view from all angles. The pin hinge and catch are correct for the Victorian period, and the moonstone agilorescence shines through both the front and the back. Handcrafted jewelry is like no other and the arts and craft movement really sought to showcase craftsmanship, a return to natural motifs, and also celebrate the natural elements such as stones that were used in jewelry. The arts and crafts movement was a response to the exhibition in 1851, where a lot of fabricated items uh, were displayed. And this movement really took space between 1850s through about 1930s or so. I'll now share with you two pieces from my collection. 10 smaller moonstone cabochons and 10 tiny seed pearls surround a larger central moonstone cabochon. The agilorescence of this brooch is incredible, and the jeweler has managed the near impossible to make the stones all shine simultaneously. More on that in just a moment. This brooch is open to allow maximum light, and you can see the antique catch and hinge. A little known gem cutter secret. Cutting a lip on the edge of a moonstone helps direct the light, but explains the beautiful adolescence and light return. This ring features iolite and moonstone. Iolite was often used in arts and crafts period jewelry. The ball design on the shoulders is also typical of this period. Here is a view of the reverse. The Art Nouveau designs of Lalique and Tiffany took on a particularly ethereal look with the usage of moonstones. These pieces that I'm about to share with you were created between the 1890s and about 1914. Let's take a look. Lalique is a French glassmaker founded by the renowned glassmaker and jeweler René Lalique in 1888. Best known for his art glass and perfume bottles, 
His jewelry is highly coveted, and they were statement pieces even in their time. Louis Comfort Tiffany was the Leek's American counterpart, and he made significant contributions to the decorative arts, including glass. The Tiffany name continues to be synonymous with quality. Next up, we'll look at one of my favorite pendants from that same time frame. This pendant features an 11 mm moonstone surrounded by four well-saturated rubies set in handwork gold. A second moonstone, 5 mm inside, sits just below. The adularescence of the center stone is truly special, showing a complete blue flash. Art Nouveau in design, the elements are all handmade and constructed with complete care. Moonstones continue to be popular from the Victorian period through the Edwardian period and the Deco period as well. Let's take a look at some early Art Deco examples. This ring bears French hallmarks and is crafted in white gold. We can date it to after 1915 and no later than 1930 based on its materials and style. The adularescence threw me for a loop on this one, as one stone is blue and the other is almost green. My gemologist friend confirmed it is indeed a moonstone and not a rainbow moonstone. Jewelers were setting moonstones into jewelry of all kinds. Let's take a look at this dress clip. Two adularescent moonstones are set in silver among shimmering marcosites. You can recognize a well-made piece based on the careful usage of materials, quality of workmanship, which leads to longevity. Pieces do not have to be expensive for them to be special. These earrings combine moonstone with platinum and diamond, and they have a really lovely adularescence. On the other side of the spectrum, we have these high-end Art Deco earrings set with old-cut diamonds and moonstones in platinum. The moonstones display a full, strong adularescence to both the front and the back. The following ring is difficult to date. Crafted in gold, it has design elements that are typical of the first quarter of the 20th century. Let's take a look. Three moonstones and eight rubies adorn this ring. It's a statement piece, akin to an Art Deco cocktail ring, yet the handmade workmanship, setting, and shoulders nod to the first two decades of the 20th century. Note how the shank is designed to allow maximum light to reach the stone. Again, clever craftsmanship. Sapphires and rubies were both commonly paired with moonstones, and I managed to find a bracelet that complements my ring with rubies quite well. Let's take a look. This panel bracelet holds five moonstone cabochons in silver, showcasing their adolescence. The rubies are the perfect pop of color, typical of the Art Deco period. During the Art Deco period, bullet cut cabochons became popular. The dramatic height that you could achieve was one of the attractions to it. Moonstones, of course, were used as well as many other gemstones. First, a garnet and moonstone bullet cut cabochon ring. The claw prongs and under gallery are absolutely spectacular on this one. The bracelet again showcases the height of the cabs as well as the cat's eye effect. The moonstones alternate with reverse set faceted citrines. Both these pieces are beautiful examples of art deco moonstone jewelry. Our next example is a ring and this one made in Germany and it's quite unusual. This ring has a modernist vibe, art deco symmetry, and several techniques all wrapped into one. White guilloche enamel rings encircle the adularescent moonstones, set over early hand engraved panels with a cross-patched pattern. This ring definitely nods to the Bauhaus style, and is late art deco period. Moonstone continued to be used through the mid-20th century. In the 1960s, there was a resurgence in popularity. Let's take a look at some of George Jensen's pieces. Shown here are designs manufactured by George Jensen's company in the 1960s. Moonstones continue to enjoy worldwide popularity and particularly are popular in Germany and Scandinavian countries. We'll now take a look at some of the materials that have been used to emulate moonstone. Glass has been used for well over a century and is one of the greatest pretenders. Moon glow glass was created to emulate that coveted Cylon blue moonstone look. Opaline and its more transparent nephew, opalite, are also commonly mistaken for moonstone because of their jelly-like opalescent look. 
shown here is an Art Deco period moon glass ring in motion. Note how it appears to have a slight cat's eye effect. Aside from glass, there are also some stones that are commonly misidentified as moonstone. Let's take a look at three of the common cases of mistaken identity. Gray cat's eye, some varieties of opal, and colorless aura quartz, which is sometimes called angel quartz and is a treated form of quartz, are all sometimes mislabeled as moonstone. Keep your eyes peeled. Last but not least, we should definitely talk about moonstone care. Now, moonstones have a hardness of about six to six and a half on the Mohs scale, and that means that they are significantly softer than stones such as diamonds or sapphires or even anything in the barrel family. This means that you shouldn't knock them about carelessly or toss them into your jewelry box. As we have seen, these stones can last centuries, but you should care for them well. They should never be cleaned using an ultrasonic or a steam cleaner. And my recommendation is to always use a paintbrush and a little bit of dish soap. I really like Dawn. What I do is I create a solution where I just take a little bit of water, a little dish soap, mix it up, and then I dip my brush and clean the underside and top side and then rinse off the piece. You shouldn't soak your moonstones either, and that'll allow you to keep them clean, but uh, not fragile. We don't want to exacerbate anything that might be a fissure or a crack or any of those centipedes inside. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I am excited to continue to share more resources with you. So please follow along on my journey. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and always leave me comments about what you would like to see next. Thank you and take care. I'll see you again soon.